So last week I made a video on the debug console in Game Maker. Uh, this is a handy debugging tool and someone in the comments of that video uh, asked about creating custom debug views, which I suppose is the next logical place to go after this. So uh, if, you, uh, if you click on the views tab in the, uh, the upper left corner of this debug, um, debug overlay in Game Maker, uh, by default, nothing will be in it, and we'll just have a kind of awkward empty box. Uh, this is a place where you can create your own custom uh, debug windows like this, and you can use them to do things like create custom inspectors, uh, other debug tooling um, in your game. Uh, this entire system, by the way, is driven by a partial implementation of Dear I Am GUI. So if you've ever used that, either in Game Maker as an extension or in some other software, you probably have a pretty good idea how this is going to work. So, uh, let me get rid of this debug log because I don't need it and it's just going to be a distraction. Um, if you type dbg underscore and then hit control space, you can see there's a whole list of functions which relate to creating custom debug views. And I'm going to try not to turn this video into just me, like, enumerating all these functions. Uh, you can probably guess how a lot of them are going to work just based on the name. If you're familiar with creating uh, user interface and user interface terminology, things like buttons, checkboxes, color pickers, drop downs, that sort of thing. By the way, if I sound different today, I am. I have moved my computer to a different room, and the acoustics are going to be a little different, and it's going to take me some time to figure out how to make that, like, you know, not sound totally weird. I might have to actually, like, stick some acoustic foam on the walls or something because I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit more echoey in here than I'm used to it being. Anyway, uh, we can start by saying dbg underscore view. This is going to create a new debug view, uh, which we can use and which we can put things in. So I'm going to give this a name. Uh, I'm going to, in this video, just basically create a little inspector for the player so that we can look at and mess around with the various uh, parameters of the player. So let's, um, let's give that a name. Uh, we can uh, pass in a true or false Boolean, whether or not we want this to be, like, open by default. I'm gonna go with true. So if I were to run this now, uh, we're gonna have basically an empty, uh, an empty window here, which has a title of player stuff. You can click on the little triangle to open and close, or open and minimize it, if you'd like. If you click on the views tab, we can see that we have a, um, a debug view for player stuff. If you hide it, it'll go away. You can bring it back. And we can start uh, putting different bits of UI in there, and we can be on our way uh, creating a little inspector for the player. So, so let's start to put some stuff in this uh, in this player inspector. So if we say dbg underscore text input, um, we can create a little text box which will uh, a, t a text input box which will be able to uh, type numbers into and modify, uh, for example, the player's x and y position. So, uh, most of the debug uh, UI widgets work on a system of references, and you can create references to a variable of a GameMaker instance of, or of a struct. Uh, basically anything that you can access via the DAW operator. And the way that we're going to tell um, the debug text input box to, like, what value to track, uh, we're going to use a little function called ref create. Uh, the ref create function is going to take a few things. One is going to be a reference to the thing that you want to track. So that's going to be an instance ID, a um, an existing reference to a struct. Uh, I'm going to use the player's instance ID because I am uh, running this in the create event of the player uh, over here, player's create event. So we're going to pass the uh, the player's instance ID as the first parameter. Secondly, you're going to want the um, a string containing the variable name that you're going to keep track of. So in our case, the x position, and that is going to create a reference to the player's uh, x variable, and we'll be able to use that to uh, show it in the debug view, and we'll be able to use it to uh, to modify value in the debug view. Um, you can also uh, pass in a little label in case you want uh, the um, like the text box to have a specific label. Uh, by default, they should all, like, the label should just be the, the name of the variable that you're keeping track of, but you can set it to whatever you want. And lastly, uh, the type. So when you type text into a text input field, it could be several things depending on the context. You might want it to be a string, you might want it to be a real number, so a, a floating point number, you might want it to be an integer with no fractional part. And uh, if we type a uh, an R, in quotes, so, uh, you know, as a string, 
Uh, that's going to tell GameMaker that this debug text input should return a real number uh, from it. Uh, you could you could tell to return an integer uh, with an I. You could tell to return uh, a string with an S. I think that's the default. Uh, in our case, we want position to be a, uh, a real number of floats, so we'll just pass that a parameter of R. Um, yeah, there's a couple of aliases for uh, the type specifiers. S or T, I assume T, T stands for text. Uh, if you want a string, I or D for integer, so integer or I was going to say decimal is probably what D stands for, but that doesn't sound right. F, R, or G for real. Anyway, uh, we can copy this line. We can do it again uh, for the player's Y, uh, y coordinate if we want to show that in a debug view. So let's run the game again. And we now have two text input fields containing uh, the player's X and Y coordinates. Uh, those are tracked, so if I walk around, the values are going to update. Uh, I can type in uh, numbers, and um, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to input movement commands into that text input box. Uh, we can type numbers to control the player's uh, position on the screen, if we'd like. Uh, this can be I'm sure you can imagine all kinds of ways in which this can be useful to uh, to debug your game, if you ever wanted to create custom inspectors or level editors or that kind of thing. So. Uh, another thing you might have noticed is that both of these fell under a um, basically a heading that was called just default, and you can um, you can create different sections uh, in a debug view uh, if you'd like to um, you know categorize the different values which you might be keeping track of in your little inspector. So I can create a debug section. And I can, uh, let's give it a name, position. And now after I've done that, all the debug um, text input widgets that are created after that will automatically fall under this position uh, section. And you can also give this a, a true or false, whether or not you'd like it to be open by default. Um, it can be collapsed by default if, you'd, um, if you think that would make your life easier. Uh, we can say position. You can also copy and paste values. If you hit copy uh, and uh, just like paste that into Notepad or something, it'll it'll just basically be a JSON string that you can copy and paste if you'd like to um, preserve the values that can be found inside this debug view for any reason. Anyway, let's move on to some other things. So there's a couple of other UI uh, widgets that you can use. Obviously, I said I I wouldn't spend a great deal of time going through each and every one of them. Um, some things of note. Uh, drop downs are kind of fun, so let's um, let's create another debug se section for like other stuff over here. Um, if I wanted to maybe keep track of the player's health values, uh, we could, and this doesn't really make sense because health is usually like in most games that player health would just be a number like x or y coordinate, right? But to drive home the point, let's ref create. Uh, self.id and the player's HP value. Uh, by the way, this is something that annoys people who aren't me. You don't have to use self for most of these things. I do it because I like it and I like to like not have it be ambiguous whether something's an instance variable or a local variable or something else. You don't have to do that. Um, a lot of people think that it's weird to type self constantly when you do these things. So if that gets on your nerves, just ignore that. Anyway, uh, the next thing that's going to come after this is going to be a specifier or array of values. Uh, this is going to be basically the uh, the contents of the dropdown. Uh, actually, let's go 0, 1, 2, 3 as text. And uh, there's a little more you can do with that. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, next is going to be just the uh, the label that you might want to give this um, this dropdown. Uh, same as with the X and Y position. Uh, do note that at the current moment, uh, the documentation, like the built-in documentation for debug dropdown appears to be wrong because it says there should be another parameter in between the specifier or array of values and the, uh, the label, but that isn't correct. I followed a bug on that uh, a little while ago. Hopefully it'll be fixed soon. Anyway, this will create a little dropdown and we will be able to um, we'll, we will be able to select either 0, 1, 2, or 3 health for the player. 
and that's going to do exactly what you think it does. Uh, by default, uh, the number returned when you select an entry from a dropdown is going to be just the index in the list uh, starting from zero. So if you select the uh, the zeroth element in the list, it's gonna it's gonna return a zero. Uh, the fourth element in the list is gonna return three. Uh, if you would like, uh, for example, if you would like a element in a list to return something that isn't just the like index in the list, uh, for example, if you want to have zero, one, two, or a lot of health, let's go zero. Let's go zero, one, two, three, or a lot of health. Um, we could follow that with a colon and type in like 100 HP and that's going to create a row of hearts that's just going to spill off the screen because there's not enough space. And um, that's kind of like when you create an Enum in Game Maker and you want to assign a value to an Enum that isn't just the um, like the literal enumerated element. Uh, if I run this, uh, we can select 0, 1, 2, 3 or a lot of health and for whatever reason, uh, scrolling the mouse wheel inside this list doesn't make it scroll up or down. You have to drag the, um, uh, the this thing, this scroll bar. Uh, we can select a lot of health, and that's going to give us hearts spilling off the side of the screen because there's not enough space. All right, so those are drop downs. Those are kind of fun. Uh, what else would I like to um, to create here? So I do like myself a good debug slider, a good um, like UI um, scroll bar or a, a slider, whatever you want to call it. But I feel like you should be able to, uh, to figure out how those work based on what I've shown you so far. Let's try something different. All right, for the last thing, let's go create a debug button. Uh, this isn't all that fancy. You can probably guess how a debug button is going to behave, but because I like them, uh, let's give this a label. Uh, let's, for example, create a button, which will kill the player. Um, this is going to take a label, a debug reference, and unlike uh, the debug references for like variables and stuff, um, the reference for the debug button, this is probably could be better named, but this is going to be either a method, uh, which is bound to an instance of something, or just a regular function, which is going to be executed whenever you click the button. Anything that's callable, basically, um, can be an existing like game maker function that you would define somewhere else, or you can just uh, define it anonymously like this. Uh, this is going to be pretty straightforward, right? Something like with obj underscore player instance, not deactivate, instance destroy. And that's going to kill our player. And we can use this to, uh, well, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So if we want to, uh, I don't know, mess around with the player, mess with their mess with their health values, uh, mess with their position on the screen, and then when we're done, we, maybe we want to see what like if the game behaves properly when the player dies to make sure that it doesn't crash or something like that. We can kill the player. I'm making this up as we go, okay? So that's a debug button. Uh, this is pretty uh, pretty useless now. We can't really do anything. Can't really move around because there's no player. All right. So one last thing before I go. Um, right now I am defining this debug view inside the create event of the player. So basically as soon as the game starts, you don't have to do that. Um, you could, for example, if you're making something like a level editor, you could spawn a debug view when you click on an object um, or when you hit a key on the keyboard or something like that. Uh, I'm going to um, make a little example of uh, creating this little inspector. Let's define uh, self.inspector. All right, fine. We'll just call it inspector. Uh, inspector equals undefined. Uh, we're going to define that in the create event. And then uh, let's go over to the player step event and then say if uh, keyboard check pressed. Um, let's say when we press the, the I key, I for inspector, uh, we can go and uh, create ourselves a, a debug view. Uh, we can say if inspector equals equals undefined then we can um then we cr can create the inspector uh we can uh save the return value of dbg underscore view to to that inspector this will create a reference to the debug view uh we can also say instead of if inspector equals undefined if uh not dbg what is it, view exists like this. So we can say if, if the debug view does not exist um, in this value, 
Uh, then we can create one uh, else dbg view delete, and this will allow us to uh, to toggle the, uh, the little player inspector when we hit the I key on the keyboard. Okay, uh, let's go and hit the I key. That's going to spawn this. Uh, we've got our um, we've got our debug view again. If we x out of it. Maybe we click that by accident. We can go to views and then player stuff and it'll come back. If I hit the I key again, it's going to disappear. And then when we go back to the views tab, it's going to be gone. And we can uh, we can toggle it infinitely like that if we'd like. All right. Uh, you can also, by the way, uh, dbg underscore section is also going to return a value, which is just going to be a reference to the debug section. And debug sections have a similar uh, set of features. So you can check if it exists. You can create one or you can delete it. Uh, if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to be able to add or remove uh, different sections within a debug view, uh, specifically, you could uh, you could do something very similar here. And I think that is about it for um, for debug views. Uh, you can do a lot with this. I definitely recommend using these if you need to create any fancy like testing interfaces or testing features for your game. Uh, if you want to create a built-in level editor for your game, this would be a pretty good way to do it. We now have this um, perhaps not pretty looking, but uh, very functional uh, set of UI features built into Game Maker. And it was designed with exactly this purpose in mind. So um, if you need it, you might as well use it. Uh, by the way, I say UI features. This is not, let's say, the highly anticipated UI layer, UI designer features that are eventually going to be added to Game Maker. Uh, this is just part of the debug overlay overhaul that came in about a year ago. And you can probably tell by looking at it, uh, this is not something that you are likely to actually like build your entire game's UI around. Like, I don't even know if this stuff works on non-desktop platforms. I've never tried. Anyway, um, this is actually something that I haven't really made use of myself because I kind of don't remember that this stuff is actually here. Like, I'm so used to having to build my own debug interfaces on my own that I just kind of forget that this is here. And it would really save me a lot of time if I would actually use it because writing my own debug tools is kind of a pain and, and kind of just time that I would rather spend actually working on my game. But maybe now that I've actually made these videos, I'll remember that they're there and I'll, I'll use these features myself and save myself a lot of time. So I think that's going to do it. Uh, if you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. Although, to be honest, this is one of those things where I, I feel like you're going to get more out of this by playing around with it yourself instead of just looking at my code. I like to post videos on the weird stuff you can do in Game Maker. I like to do things that are 3D or shader related. So if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. You should all go check out the Steam page for Wizardux, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to help out, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description.